Right now, a good candidate should be being very intentional about their brand. If you're running for office, you need to have a brand, a solid brand, a, a, a compelling brand, something that's visually compelling that tells a story and ties into the theme of your campaign. This isn't just someone who opened up Microsoft Paint and typed in your name. You want to be intentional about this. There's a lot that goes into a brand. To talk about it, I've got Michael Butler. I'm Colin Corbett. We're both with Core Strategies. Um, and Michael's done a lot of work on branding and marketing with our clients and with a bunch of campaigns. So, Michael, yeah. thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Let's talk about branding. So, uh, I mentioned earlier how important it is to be intentional with your brand. What are your thoughts about that? Well, you definitely want to tie it into your messaging and the theme of your campaign. Um, obviously, colors are important, some colors that you're comfortable with because you're going to be wearing these colors over the course of, you know, the next year and hopefully, you know, long into the future as long as you get elected and keep getting elected. Um, and then, you know, you're going to be seeing that on your yard signs, your website, your social media. I mean, it's foundational to everything that you do over the course of your campaign. So you got to make sure that you do it right. Yeah. Let's talk about what that means. When we say be intentional, we're talking about everything. So you mentioned colors. You should go through an exercise to figure out what colors work best in your district. So it might be that you've got a college town in the district and you want to use their mascots colors. Yeah. Or maybe there's a, a the big dominant community that covers most of your district and they use a specific color and you want to tie to that. Or maybe you have something in your background you want to tie to, a military history, or you used to work at a, a restaurant and they have a certain logo. There's reasons that, that you might use certain colors or you're running in a district where you need to emphasize that you're very Republican or conservative. Right. You might use red. Or maybe you're running in a district where you want to be less uh, 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 partisan. So now you might want to avoid red or blue. Um, I always say red, white, and blue are the most typically used. So try to avoid them if you can, because if you've got a whole bunch of yard signs on the side of the road and they're all red, white, and blue, none of them are going to stand out. So ideally, if you can, try to be a little bit creative with that color. But be intentional about the color of your logo. Absolutely. And I would say you also want it to be something that your supporters are going to be comfortable, be comfortable wearing. Um, like I've seen people do pink before, but you're probably not going to have a whole bunch of men lined up trying to get your campaign t-shirt and ready to walk in a parade if it's pink. No, fair point. So yeah. you need to, that's something else that you need to think about as well. Yeah. And the color, and you also want to make sure that it's not the opposite of what you said. Um, you don't want it to be an offensive color. Okay. So if everybody's a fan of this sports team and you're repping the they're competent. So don't, don't run in the northern suburbs and have green and gold as your colors for <laughs> yeah. the Packers. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, great point. So it, it also ties to fonts. Um, if you're running a campaign where your theme is someone who's going to be a bold leader, well, then your font needs to be a bold font uh, uh, the, with a specific feel that it feels bold. It might be more caps, thicker uh, with the, the lines within the font. But if you're running as somebody who's more community oriented or maybe has a softer approach, well, now you're going to use softer colors. You're going to use softer fonts, less bold, less thick, maybe some cursive. Mm -hmm. Like you want to be intentional about what fonts you use, not just, hey, I happen to like this font. Well, great. But does it tie into your theme? Does it reflect you? Because you're Remember, this is what people are going to see. So when you're out there talking to voters, when you're out there building a relationship and you say, I'm strong, and then you give them this logo <laughs> that's a pastel pink with a little bit of a cursive in it, they're not going to feel like that's a strong brand. And so yep. whether it's the color, whether it's the, 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 the font, you want to have it tie into what you're trying to portray within the campaign, right? Absolutely. And I would also say, you know, look at other logos, you know, even not even just political ones, you know, look at McDonald's or Coca-Cola and those kind of things. Maybe you can get some inspiration for that and something that you can tie in that fits your theme and your brand. Yeah, I mean, and there's there's lots of brands out there. So it's easy to start to work through and start to see what you like, what you don't, don't like. like yep. And that's helpful to show to your designer to say, hey, I love these designs. I don't love those other designs. And again, the idea is to be intentional. You want to have on there, um, your name, of course, is the logo. It seems obvious, but just to make sure people get that. Your last name, nine times out of 10, should be the last name, should be the main focus. And the mm -hmm. first name should be, should be smaller because we all remember last names more than first names. There are those situations where you have a last name that's maybe uh, unpronounced. So that people like Raja Krishmanorthy, he runs as Raja because no one can say or spell Krishmanorthy. And so we've got some candidates who are friends and clients who we've run as the first name, not the last name. There are some times that you do that, but pick one over the other because people aren't going to remember both, at least not, not right away. So emphasize the most important one, the most memorable one, and you want to emphasize that name. And that's the big emphasis, not your first name um, or if you're vice versa, and not the office. Sure, include the office, but even the office isn't the thing you want to emphasize. Whatever that, that thing you want to emphasize, 
which is typically the last name, that's big and everything else is small. Yeah, and I would also say, especially if you have a common like first name, like my name's Michael, right? There's a million Michaels out there. But so there, there's a chance that if it's a contested primary or even general election, there may be two Michaels running for the same office. But if I emphasize my last name, odds are there's not going to be two people with the same last name running. You yeah. know, there may be two Kevins or there may be two Michaels or those kind of things, but probably not like two Michael Butlers. So emphasize that last name. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, all right, as we close out this video, just because we've seen zillions of logos, curious some things you've seen maybe in a good logo or a bad logo. Let's start on good logos that you've seen that really stood out to you that said, wow, that was memorable. What do you think? Uh, good logos, I mean, obviously that last name emphasis, that's important, like making sure that the colors um, um, fit your brand and fit you. Those well, like those a specific are though, that maybe is something you saw. Like I'll tell you, like, yeah. I remember you know seeing a candidate run for judge and using like a judicial element, like a yeah. graphic that in there, like a like a, like um, a the scales of justice or, or the gavel. Like that, yeah. I know someone who was running um, last cycle who was running a, a very safety oriented campaign, and so they used like the outline of a sheriff's badge within. Right. Um, and so thinking through like some of those things that might stand out, that might go wow, that was really compelling, really interesting. What are some things right. that you've seen? I've seen one like, you know, it was farming community and they kind of have like a little bit of a like field aspect um, to the logo. So that that was really good. Um, you want something that kind of ties into your district or where you're running for sure. Yeah. I remember one candidate who was running is very community oriented um, and she just had this people just liked her, but she was. Um, she was, I knew her as a very strong leader, but people knew her as more of a friendly, hosting people at the house, you know, more of a host type. And it was always, she was always very um, uh, prim and proper and, you know, and she knew all Emily's post rules. Yeah. And so she used cursive in her name and that played very well for her. And it really, I mean, people loved that logo and loved that look. So yeah. you're thinking through those little touches, right. right? It's not just throwing this thing and doing some word art with your name. Like it's <laughs> gotta be intentional. Curious some things you've seen that were bad in a logo that you were like, wow, like that was not a good Call, not a good logo. What do you think? Mm. I'll start so okay. you have a chance to yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jeb Bush's logo when he uh, ran for yeah. president, Jeb with the exclamation point. Yeah. Like the idea was let's try to make Jeb interesting, so let's just throw an exclamation point <laughs> on there. But you're not going to make Jeb interesting. I've seen, uh, I saw a logo a cycle before that where it seemed to be a ripoff of the Colgate logo and it looked like a, a toothpaste logo. Like you want to think through what other brands are out there because if my logo looks a lot like their brand, then that's what people are going to think about. And so right. this, this one looked like the Colgate logo and everyone made fun of him for being the toothpaste candidate. Um, so you want to be careful about things like that. What about you? Did you anything you saw that you were like that was pretty bad? Yeah, I've seen some similar to that where it's like they're it's obviously like a blatant rip off of something else. And you know, you can all you can incorporate elements of other logos that you like, but you don't want to just you know oh like it's the same as the Kit Kat logo or something like that. It's just not good. I mean, I love Kit Kat, so I might get my vote. But <laughs> overall, you want something unique to you um, and. You know, we've got, we've got a whole folder of some of the best logos we've liked, some of them we've disliked. Maybe if you want to have some fun with this conversation, shoot me or Michael a note. We can send you some logos that we go, yeah, do this, but don't do this, because there are some <laughs> really bad ones out there. So here, it's a good excuse to, for you to follow up with us. Follow up with us, and we'll give you some advice on some logos we've seen that we like, some that we don't like. Core Strategies does this works for our clients, so does Core Services. So whether you hire us to run your campaign or not, we've got graphic designers who are some of the best in the business. We will hook you up with them. They'll get you a really professional logo and if you're running for office, as Michael said, this is going to be everywhere. It's going to be on your yard signs, your literature, your mailings, your videos, your ads. Everywhere you go, your logo is going to follow. So don't cheap out on the logo. It's not expensive to do. It's one of the first things you should spend money on in your campaign. And do it early because you want people to remember this brand. So do it now so you're ready for 2024 and beyond. Contact us, Michael, my team. We'll be happy to help you get that brand that you can use now and into the future. So reach out to us. Thank you, Michael, for giving us your thoughts. He'll be available any time of the day or night. Contact him at the middle of the night. Just don't contact me and they'll give you advice. We're here to help, so reach out to us and we'll help you make sure you have a good brand, a winning brand, so you can be a successful candidate.